Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming back. All my returning subscribers, new subscribers, welcome. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the videos on this channel. So today I'm going to talk about a slightly different video. I'm going to talk about being a clinical pharmacist in the UK because I get quite a few questions around what that entails, what they actually do in the hospital and generally most people don't know exactly what a clinical pharmacist who works in a hospital does because most people are very familiar with you know pharmacists being in a dispensary checking medications giving advice you know and things like that but not knowing like what is the role of a pharmacist in the ward i'll start by talking about what a hospital pharmacist period does and then that will kind of lead you into understanding what a hospital pharmacist does and that's when you become qualified and everything okay so i already have a couple of videos about pre-reg and i will put that in the description box and i'll link it up in the channel somewhere i don't know where it is here or here uh, but just so you can watch it and you know just get a little bit more familiar so right let's get into the video a hospital pharmacist or a clinical pharmacist is one that would work in the hospital and usually it would be on the ward sometimes they can work in a dispensary in the hospital um, but most times they will be on the wards and some of the hospital pharmacists, especially the specialist ones, they have clinics that they run and all that. So I'll give you a brief overview of what a hospital pharmacist does. So basically, hospital pharmacists would work on the ward. Sometimes they have one ward, sometimes they have two wards. It depends on, you know, how many people work or how many pharmacists they have in the hospital. Um, so you would have your own ward and usually wards are... Uh, you know, they depend on how many beds they are. Some wards have 10 beds, 20 beds, 30 beds. But I think standard is usually between 24 to about 32 beds. And that's how, you know, a normal ward is. OK, so you will be in charge of the patients there alongside the doctors and nurses, physios, you know, um, occupational therapy, like just different kinds of people who are working as part of the multidisciplinary team or the MDT team. A so hospital that. pharmacist will be in charge of new patients. When they come in, you're doing something called medicine reconciliation. And I'll go into that in a little bit more details um, later. So you do medicine reconciliation, which is basically making sure that the medicines that are prescribed for the patient is appropriate or are appropriate. And it would depend on, you know, what they came in on, what they're currently here on and so many other factors. You're also going to be um, in charge of patients who are already there, making sure that every medication that they're currently prescribed is still appropriate. So it might have been appropriate yesterday or day before yesterday. And then today something has changed, maybe in the blood or a side effect or something, and it has to be stopped. So those kind of things. You're also going to be in charge of discharging patients. So the doctors would do the, no, you know, the discharge summary and the pharmacist is the last pot of call in terms of like making sure that everything on that medication list in the discharge summary is correct. So that's what you'll be doing. It also be doing things like therapeutic drug monitoring. So there's some medications that have a narrow therapeutic index. So things like digoxin, things like vancomycin, gentamicin, you know, like amikacin. There's so many drugs that you have to watch to make sure that there is no toxicity. Things like lithium. There are just a couple of them. And then a pharmacist would do that. Um, for normal interventions and advice, usually if a doctor or the team of doctors want to start some medication and they don't know much about it, they would usually ask the pharmacist and say, okay, is this appropriate? You know, what can we have alternatives and, you know, things like that. Pharmacists sometimes also order medications um, to the wards or for the wards. Um, in addition, we do counselling. So if a new medication is started, especially some specific ones that would have, you know, profound side effects and Farm, um, patients really need to know about them so the pharmacist to do the counseling and just so many other things obviously there's teaching there is um screening of uh, medications and i'll go into all that but i don't want this video to be too long but that's kind of like the basis of what we so do when i was at pre-reg one of the things we i did was doing something called the drug history and I think the role of a pre-reg is kind of mixed between what a pharmacy technician would do and what a hospital pharmacist would do because you need to know how to do both of them because sometimes when you're on the ward, you might not have a pharmacy technician working with you because pharmacy technicians, um, they do 
so many other things, the different things they do. So some of them are medicine management ones, and they're the ones that carry out the drug history and the pharmacist does the medicine reconciliation. So as a pre-reg, you will start, you need to start to know everything from the beginning. So you'll complete several drug histories. I think in my um, pre-reg, we had a certain number before you were allowed to do it on your own. Drug history involves a patient coming in, they've just been admitted into the hospital. You're checking to make sure that the medications they were getting or they were prescribed prior to this admission is still prescribed and there's that continuation if something needs to be stopped it should be stopped if something you know that kind of just making sure that nothing is missing that's what a pre-reg working in hospital will do and when you're doing a drug history obviously you're going to be looking for good sources so there are so many sources to look for but they have to be authentic ones one you could get a source from the patients their medications their gp their GP records, their community pharmacy records, and just even previous hospital admission. It's being able to make that decision to know what source is authentic and most recent that reflects really what the patient was on. So that's basically what you do. And it involves, you know, speaking to the patient, asking them, you know, do you still take this medication and getting permission to check the GP records because that would be obviously a very good source. So once you finish all the drug history, you're asking for so many things. You're asking, you know, eye drops, ear drops, nasal drops, injections, because sometimes when you ask people oh, what medications are you taking, they're only thinking about tablets. So just, just cover all that and um annotate on either if it's a drug chart a physical drug chart or on a computer if it's an electronic drug chart so that is done and then the pharmacist will then you know review everything and verify or screen it as we say in hospital okay so that's what happens um another thing the pre-reg pharmacist um, in hospital would do would be um counseling so there are some medications as i mentioned that are high risk medications things like warfarin things like rivaroxaban dabigatran apixaban you know amiodarone digoxin you know sometimes you have to not sometimes most of the time you'd have to counsel the patients if they're newly started on them and there's like different checklists for that so a pre-reg pharmacist would do that there's something also called pod checks so checking the medications in the patient's um drawer so it's patient's own drug but you're checking to make sure that it is appropriate anything that's um, expired or they're no longer taken, you will just um, get rid of um, in the specific wastage way for that hospital. So those are just like a quick summary of what um, a period pharmacist would do when they're working with a technician and then they move on to working with a pharmacist and that's when you see how a pharmacist will screen their prescription. So they're looking at the drug charts. As I said, it could be electronic, it could be a physical drug chart. And you're thinking, okay, the patient came in on this, they haven't prescribed this. Is this the correct dose? Yes. Are they meant to have this? Yes. And you take, you know, it's not as straightforward as that, but you know, you're checking so many things and any medications that have been missed out that they haven't been prescribed, you would make a note of it and inform the medical team to find out why they haven't prescribed it. Is there a reason? Is it just omitted and things like that? That's just a very, very quick summary. So now I'll tell you what I do as a clinical pharmacist when I go to work. So when I go to work on a good day <laughs> or on a bad day, normally when I go to work, I will print out my ward list and it could be either, you know, a handover sheet or a work list. And there I want to see all my patients. We have something my hospital call a prioritization tool, but if you don't have one, it's always good to prioritize your patients and people do it in different ways. But the way I do mine is I'm looking at one, patients that need to go home because it's very essential so that there can be space for new patients to come in. So patients that are going home, I will prioritise them first so that we can have space to have new ones. Um, I'll be prioritising new patients because I want to make sure that maybe they came in the night before. We want to make sure that all their medications have been prescribed, they've not missed anything, nothing has gone wrong. They need to be, you know, that proper continuation. So new patients will be my second priority. I'll be looking at patients on um, who are very unwell, so people who are on maybe high risk medications or maybe their renal function was poor or things like that, I'll prioritize them. And then I'll see all the other patients, I'll do my therapeutic drug monitoring and that will kind of be it. So that's how I prioritize my patient, it can be different. And of course it can change as the day goes by, okay? Once I do that and prioritize, so I know who I want to see first, I will do my discharges. Discharges, uh, I think I can do a whole video, like I've done presentations to people um, like junior pharmacists um, to talk about, and I can share that at some point if you want to. But when I do my discharges, um, there are so many things to check. You're making sure what they had before is what they are having now. And if there are any new medications you're annotating on the discharge summary, why they've been started, any kind of monitoring you want the GPs to do in community, any message for the community pharmacy, you know, it's that sort of thing. But let's say I had a new patient, what would I do? So I would 
look at the patient. The first thing I do is I take the patient's notes because that would have a lot of information there. My hospital is an electronic hospital, so the drug charts are electronic, blood tests are electronic, um, even blood pressure, heart rates. Um, temperature, everything is recorded electronically, which is so amazing. Um, so it makes your work really easy. And most of the um, clinical letters and, you know, any kind of annotations are usually online, but the actual notes, you know, when they were collected in is a physical, like in a folder, which is fine. I don't really mind that. So that's the only thing that is like un in paper form. So when I get my notes, already the technician would have done the drug history as I said earlier. So what I'll be doing is the medicine reconciliation. So I like to read the notes because I want to know a little bit more about the patient. Why have they come in? What's their past medical history? I'm looking at, you know, their blood results just so I kind of know what medications I might be saying, okay, this dose is not appropriate and things like that. So when I look at the notes, I want to see, okay, they've come in for, let's say, maybe they had a stroke, you know, they've come in for that um, past medical history. Maybe they had cardiovascular issues previously. So I kind of know I have an idea of the medications I'm expecting to see them on. Maybe they have diabetes as well. So those the past medical history is really important. And then when I look at blood results, um, I look at the ones that are relevant. So I usually would check, obviously, their renal function because that's really important. And I'll calculate their renal um, function using the cockroft gold uh, method. This, I just prefer to use that method. There's EGF, however, I prefer to use that. Um, I'll check the renal function. I'll be checking the liver to make sure everything is fine with them and checking if there are any kind of um, discrepancies that are not great or derangement. Um, I will also be checking the blood pressure, the heart rate. Remember I said it was electronic so I can see what the figures are. I'm checking temperature obviously for any signs of infection. I'll be looking at a full blood count and looking at the infection markers. You know those are the things just to have a picture of that patient. Okay I'll do something called VTE. I'll put the full minute on the screen and that's to make sure that that has been the assessment has been completed and if they need to be on any kind of um VTE prophylaxis. I'll make sure that's that that's there and it's appropriate. I remember you're also looking at the medications as well to make sure they're not already on one. And then I look at the medications. So when I look at the medicines, I'm checking, okay, this is what they were meant to be on. Has this been prescribed? Is this the correct dose? Because I already have information about their heart rates, their blood pressure and the blood results. Is it still appropriate at this time? So if I see that maybe their potassium is raised, I'll be looking at medications that would probably cost um, contribute to it or would cost that and ask them to withhold that. If that med uh, maybe potassium was low, then they can have replacement. So I'm looking at all the medications like that, making sure that they've been prescribed. And if I'm happy with how they've been prescribed and it's appropriate for the patient, I will take it. So on a computer, there's something you can take. And once that's done, I look at medications that are missing. Why are they missing? Have they been written in the notes? Why they're missing? Is it because maybe there was something wrong with them? Maybe, um, one of the blood results were off or you know something else is there a reason for that and I would note that and then once that's finished and I'm happy with that if there's any kind of interventions I need to do I'll be putting it on the in the notes or most times I'm on the ward so I'll speak to the doctors and say look did you know this patient is this or that, that you know we need to change this and usually they will do it um, because you know they work really well with the pharmacist the clinical pharmacy has evolved and a lot of doctors and pharmacists and nurses walk together okay so that's kind of basic of what i do and once i check and i'm happy then i make notes i create something called a care plan that makes me know what i'm looking out for what i need to monitor maybe when i come tomorrow and see okay fine this patient you know needs this if the patient is on any kind of antibiotics i'm checking that the indication is there it's appropriate according to our guidelines you know and the dose is fine for the patient and an end or review date is there there's just it's there's so much stuff that a pharmacist does it sounds so strange Forward, but it can take like depending on how complicated the patient is you have to look at the patient as a whole and once you're happy with that then I can take that I have seen this patient if there's something I need to come back to you know double check the next day you know I'll do that sometimes most times there are things that you want to check after so that's kind of what a clinical pharmacist does like the basic part you're still doing counseling as well as I said let's say they've said a new medication you're checking that there is no interaction you're reminding the doctors on when to do levels you know for that especially with vancomycin gentamicin the joxin you know those kind of medications you're reminding them um, you're also making sure that on the ward the ward stock and 
the medications being ordered for the patients are appropriate and they're done. So usually I would order in the beginning of the day and towards the end of the day, I would check. We have like a system to see what else they have ordered and I order it in for the patient. So that's basically what a clinical pharmacist does. So my next video will be comparing what a clinical pharmacist does and a community pharmacist. But just bear in mind that I haven't worked as a community pharmacist for a long time. I've only locumed there. So it wouldn't be like the best kind of comparison, but just what I kind of have an idea of and which one you might want to go for. Um, I'd also include salaries because I think that's really important. Salaries of a community pharmacist when they're pre-regis and hospital one and when they become pharmacists, the difference in salaries and things like that. I also intend to share interview tips and, you know, different things like that in the future. Whatever kind of video you want, let me know in the description box and I will say or I will try and film it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.